breaking news this morning. Yeah, woke up and React Native 0.64 release candidate. It's a all right. It looks like it's so funny because last week we talked about Hermes support on iOS, and this uh, release candidate seems to be mainly the support of Hermes on iOS plus uh, React 17. Yeah, that seems to be the biggest announcement that it's now available on iOS. I also saw that it's now enabled by default on Android. So they seem to be going all in on that. Cool. So this is going to improve dramatically the debugging experience if you are using Reanimated 2. Yeah, let's hope that the available debugger will um, help us debug more easily. Uh, we are, of course, going to try it out and um, soon going to give a verdict. Um, I also tried to look for uh, changes or like specific Git commits. There's no like official release notes out, but from the commits, I managed to gather a few other um, things that have changed. So I think like the the main theme of this release is like modernization. We have um, a lot of legacy stuff removed. So camera roll, which was since a while like extracted as a community module is now not available more on React Native, in, in React Native itself. So these things are good because then you don't have to compile them twice. And you know, React Native has made like an effort for a lean core since a while. Mm. Um, so of course you have to install these other modules, but they get updated more frequent more frequently than React Native itself. And also they increased like the minimum Android SDK target to 21 instead of 16, which allows them to not worry so much about these really old Android versions. Cool. And with 0.6.3, there were, I guess, some small bugs. Maybe also, the, I guess, there's a couple of bugs fixes which have been shipped. I need to check. I hope uh, this version will be... I mean, it's not even released yet, but I hope it will be shipped in the next uh, Expo SDK. Yeah, I hope so too. And, you know, I saw that there are over 1,000 commits. Hopefully, a lot of bug fixes, a lot of quality upgrades. I managed to find a small, few really small things, which, of course, you wouldn't make a big announcement about, but that I am excited, which are, like, small quality of life upgrades. One thing is the most <laughs> exciting for me is that now on a scroll view on Android, you can put the content offset property. What so. does that <laughs> Is it a game so, changer or no? Wait, what does it do? I don't even know no. what it does on iOS. Okay, so let's say you have like a, you try to make an animation and you have like, uh, like a swipeable, so you have some swipeable cards and uh, you animate it using a scroll view. Mm -hmm. um, but now let's say you want to start on the second card. Yes. So you need to put an offset on the scroll view. Yes. And while that works perfectly on iOS using the content offset property. On Android, it would always start at the beginning. So the best thing you could do so far was to, on Android, on using effect, put a scroll to. Even though you don't really know when it's mounted, so maybe you have to do on layout to make sure that everything is, you know, you need to do the scroll to where, when all the content has been displayed and it's hard actually to find out when... Uh, So it sounds... Okay, that's a game changer, actually. I was joking, but yeah. this is huge, actually. Yeah, it was simply not possible before. You would lose at least one frame. and uh, At least. It would. It could lead to some chunk if you, yes. if you would display it. That's a nice improvement. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Another one is that the image now support... The image component now supports the on-progress event. So you could display a loading indicator for an image, for example, as seen on Instagram. And is it a um, progress indicator? So that gives you also like, oh, we're at 50% or that gives you like uh, a precise progress of... Yeah, of oh, okay. exactly. So previously you would have to use something like React Native Fetch Blob, which would give you the, the progress. But of course, this is much more convenient. 
How does it look like on Instagram? You said it's... So on Instagram, if your internet is really shitty, um, it would show like a, a gray background mm. uh, on the image and like have a really subtle circular uh, loading indicator. Where you would see like 20, 40, 80 percent. Um, if you are on Wi-Fi, you will probably never see it. But um, it's nice that now this is also possible on React Native. So it's uh, is it like a property where you can attach a component to display a state depending on the progress of the loading image? Or? Yeah, so the the prop on progress on the image component is like similar on as like the on error or the on load um, property on the image where you could just um, define a use callback and then uh, depending on if there's an error or if the image has uh, finished loading, you could fade it in. And now if they're on progress, you can keep a state of the progress and based on that, render a progress indicator. Okay. And William, that's not all. Uh oh. So you can now <laughs> customize the shadow color on Android. <gasps> No. No way. <laughs> no. No, this I don't believe. No, no, no. It, but I have to but relativize. Not... Okay, tell me. It only works on SDK 28 and above, so... But you mean you can customize the shadow of the elevation? Yes. So it's still you still have to use the elevation? You still have to use elevation, unfortunately. You I'm... almost gave me a heart attack. Yeah, I was like... I mean, <laughs> ele <laughs> the elevation API, I don't know... <laughs> How they mess it up so much? We we just want we just want shadows. Norm, normal shadow is customizable because you know, like for a second, you made me believe that they added shadow support on Android, and I was like, oh, but that wouldn't be React Native anymore. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, but you yeah. can. I guess that's a game changer. I don't know. Well, no, 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 we, not a game let's changer. Let's call it a game changer if they support. Shadows yeah. on Android and on Android in general. I think you need to have some crazy weird libraries to support shadows on Android. One hundred percent, yes. And uh, yeah, still a long way to go there, but we are moving in the right direction. Okay, content offsets on Scroll View. That's uh, that's nice. I mean, you know, I do these tutorials where we do crazy things with the pan gesture and learn and so on. But you know, the Scroll View gives you so much for free. That you know, if you can use it, uh, that's that's great. You should use it. And so now, for instance, being able to to set some default values on some or either horizontal or vertical gesture, I think that's great. That uh, reduces the barrier to entry dramatically. Absolutely. Trying to uh, the the rubber band effect that scroll view gives you, for example, yeah. makes such a huge difference. And with just a bare gesture handler, you will never be able to achieve um, animations that look that behaved is nice yeah absolutely wow exciting and people i guess are going to try it out that's why also this was a release candidate for testing and uh, last week we were talking about performance of hermes on ios so i guess also we, we start to see some uh, some people reporting on that so that's that's exciting yeah that's the big news i plan to upgrade within the next few weeks and um, we'll be happy to tell you my opinion about it 